All right, next project here is a 1955 K Harley. This is a Sportster before the Sportster. But I'm not going to get into that. What I'm going to get into is, is that we're going to repaint a set of tins, uh, front back fender and the uh, gas tank. And we're going to put the orange back on, but we're going to do it right. If you look, this stripe is all over the place. It's fatter here. And then it's crooked up here. We're going to go through, center line this thing up, and you get a, the appropriate uh, stripes on here, which would be orange with the white border line and the black. And I've already started on it, and I was like, oh, I should probably be videoing this and showing people how to center up a motorcycle fender and all that. So that's what I'm doing. It's going to be another how to uh, uh, do a race stripe on a motorcycle. And this one here, I got to do some fixies here. Got some welding. Got a little hole here to patch up, a little tear right here, the brazing. I'm going to fix this up here. And I'm going to you gotta work on getting this straightened out. This is mashed in. I'm going to go through and straighten all this stuff up. But it, uh, here's the tank right here. Pardon the mess. This is the tank. I did. Uh, did a little weld and there's a pinhole here and I didn't blow myself up so I don't need any comments about that because I'm still here to videotape it or uh, video but um these emblems are coming off and it's getting a single stripe just like the fenders down the back here and uh, well anyways this is the beginning of this project now what I'm doing is I'm using this lovely thing here which is a, a stripping disc here and I'm just kind of taking all the paint off, taking down the bare metal. I'm going to rebuild the paint job from a good solid foundation that I know is good and solid. And uh, I'll just show this here for a minute. It goes relatively quick. <laughs> And there's how the metal looks, nice and clean. It didn't take all that long, so I'm gonna go ahead and just finish the rest of this up. And then I got the struts to do, and the insides bead blasting those in the cabinet after I do some stripping with this thing. The outside's all stripped. I got the struts. The, still gotta do the inside right here. I'm gonna put that in the bead blast cabinet. And here's this one. Obviously I gotta do some repairs. And this one here, this one's pretty much ready to go. I just got to clean this up. This is from doing the vinegar in the inside, make sure the tank was good and cleaned up, and uh, also checking it for leaks. Pull the emblems, and uh, yep, we'll get to the next uh, portion of uh, getting this done. I'm going to go ahead and weld this up, and get this welded up here. Don't need to do any welding there. And that looks okay there. So, uh, yep, we're going to get this welded up. Just kind of put that there. Uh, put the camera down and uh, hit a few of them. I'm going to block it off so this way the camera lens doesn't get burnt. I don't know if that happens or not, but I'm not going to risk it because, well, I don't like buying stuff. But, anyways. Uh -oh. As you see right there, we got 
we got that's burning through it's a really thin metal it's been stretched so i'm going to uh, just kind of keep plucking away i'll show it when it's all done today's uh i'm going to give you two shop tips today one is is this it's the rubber squeegee i use that for wet sanding because it's flexible and i can blend these areas out real smooth and then the other shop tip is is that why would i want to keep bending down just little things that I do when I can just simply put this bucket up here and it elevates it up so then I, all I got to do is dip and then go. And that is today's shop tip. Now I'm blocking the <clears throat> fender out here and I'm using the squeegee and you can kind of see how good this works for these curved surfaces. Doing my cross strokes. And I'm just getting this top for starters. And obviously I got guide coat on it, so the squeegee works really well. Because you see that curve? And I can really curve it down it matches. But I like to just kind of just gently push on one edge and do my cross hatch. There it is, shop tip from the earlier in the video. Now you see how it works. Wonderful little trick. Now I got these things uh, taped off. I've got uh, the underneath painted. You can kind of see back in here. There's black around the edge there. Uh, that's a satin black for underneath and you can see I got it all taped up there and uh, what I'm going to be doing now is going ahead and put a base white down for the stripe on all you know all the tins here I'm not painting the whole thing I'm just going to do basically where is that right there four inches and that'll call a day on that now what we're doing is taking an old spray gun, shooting some white down on here to get the under base. You know, we want a nice bright white uh, foundation for the orange that we're going to put on next.
Now this is the color orange that we're using. We're using some old Molly orange here, SG103, obviously house of color. And I'm actually gonna use a fast reducer here to, to just get it to kick quicker. And uh, so anyways, um, gonna get this mixed up two to one, straight out, and then uh, we'll show shooting it. And as always, make sure you get this mixed up good. Uh, doesn't matter what it is, get it stirred up, get all the chemicals uh, blended real nice in there so the paint does what it's supposed to do. Uh, the more time you spend on the bench getting uh, everything right, the easier it is to spray. The easier it is to spray, the better the job. Unless you're me, then you're going to have problems. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is show you how to do the center line and measure the stripes here so that we can, uh, you know, get this back taped up. This in between that stripe and this stripe is going to stay orange. That's going to be the single race stripe on it. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of follow up on the fenders here so you can see how that's done. Now I'm going to go ahead and start marking the center line on this. And obviously I'm going to be using a ruler. I got this here too. And I've actually used this as a guide. I've already done my measurements up here. And up here. And I know that it's six inches wide from side to side. So all I need to do is go three inches over and I got my center line. So and that will even, you know, count back here towards the rear here. So what I'll do is set up my guide here and this ruler is kind of wonky here it's got a little bit of gap on on that and I see my let's see right there there's my three inches I just kind of mark it and you know I'm going to be within the 16th 
on everything. There's just a very slight mark there. I don't know if it's coming in on the camera, but then I'll just kind of there right here. This is the indentation right here to fit the fender. So I'm gonna still use that because I want to be a little bit higher up on the fender, knowing that I got just a little bit of off on that. So again, I'm putting a center line guide. And that mark there should be fairly close. Right here. I'll just keep continuing. And I may just go ahead and do one right there on top. out so well but at this point I think you kind of get the gist of what I'm doing here and I'm just going to put little marks all the way across at three inches and I'll finish that up and come back to the next step now I went ahead and all the way across, that's the center, center line mark there. Got one down here. And I, when I rotated around 180 degrees, I went to the opposite side uh, with holding the stick up here so that uh, you know I'm using the same side just in case there's some uh, variation. Uh, next thing I do is I get the tape out here and I'm just gonna kind of just loosely work on getting this down here and that holds after fact and it's actually a pinch off Of course, it's the rear fender. A lot of it gets covered up. You only see the very, very end of it, but still follow through on the the paint job. The, just in case you can see through a gap or something, that at least it's a uh, got a good fall through, and it's we'll, we'll say just a complete paint job. Just kind of eye this out. There we go. There's my center line, and then I'll come back, measure off of that to each side, uh, two inches each way, because it's a four inch wide stripe, and we'll just keep on moving on. Now I got the marks on here. I'll just go ahead with my tape. Same thing. Just kind of run them up right up to the mark. Just on the inside. And I'll just kind of follow that through. Nice, you know, try to be smooth in my movements here. 
Yeah, mosquitoes just kill me here. Pestilence. There you go. Just like that, I got the line down. And you can see right here how good it looks. Okay, I went ahead and pulled the center line of tape out, and right there I got the white marks that are sitting up in here. I don't know how good they're coming in the camera, but right there. And uh, now's the time to clean them so I don't have to worry about it later. I just use a, a dampened uh, paper towel. And I'm just kind of going down, just wiping all the marks off very gent gently because I don't have SC100 on this, uh, which would have been uh, an advisable thing to do. But being that it's just a single up uh, stripe, I'm getting down there. I'm not too concerned. I'll come back and just double check, make sure it's all wiped up good. All the white's gone. And it's looking like it is. I'll wait a minute or two to absolutely dry. And then uh, uh, I've got to back tape this up. Okay, I got the front fender to do. I'm not going to show that. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. And then uh, we'll get the get the back taping done. Now I got the front fender all taped up. Uh, this is actually a little bit more narrow. It's uh, three and a half inches wide instead of four, which is on the tank and the rear fender. And that's just uh, simply because the fender is more narrow. And I didn't want it to be too orange. You actually want it to look, you know, like it's supposed to, like a race stripe. But you can see it's there. It's on there. Now I've got to get this back taped up as well as the tank and this fender here so we're going to get that back taped and then uh well i got to get them hung up the tank hung up on the rack so i can shoot both the underside and the top side and these two fenders will stay on the stands but i'm going to again pat these down right here make sure these are good and uh, put down so i don't have any bleed through or blow through on the painting portion and uh, well, we'll get into it. These are all taped up. Uh, I'm gonna get them set up, mainly the tank set up so I can get that sprayed. And we're gonna go ahead and jump right to that, get it black and uh, yep, that's it. Gonna get it rock and rolling.
spraying the black, we're obviously going to go to the next uh, step. We're going to untape the uh, orange here. Let's see if I can get find a good starting spot. There it is up here. I'll get this on tape. And uh, well, that's uh, when the magic starts to show. Look how bright that orange is. Good gracious. Nice. Good choice. Um, Got to be just a little gentle coming around here on this edge here. We're going to pull back towards the inside. And I got a 1 8 inch masking tape there. That's uh, what I did the first uh, lines with. I'm going to make sure I don't got any marks or any uh, blow through. And we're going to fix any paint issues at this point. It was now the time to do it. Any uh, thin spots, and that includes with the black. And you can see right here where the tape get in there. There's a couple marks right there and there. That's where the blow through is attempting to happen. That's why you know you got to be real good about tacking everything down. Try to keep the wrinkles down, especially with your mask and tape. And we'll just get this done. And let's see right here. And I'm gonna do a very thin gold borderline stripe. Very thin. And um, we don't want it where it's blaring. It's almost like so subtle that you don't even see it. But I'll do the best job of doing the thin stripe I can by hand. And uh, well, we're kind of getting the gist of this. So let me see if I can get some of this uh, borderline here off so you can see. There it is. That looks wonderful. And I'll repeat the process on the fenders. So there it is. Okay, uh, if you made it this far in the video, <clears throat> Still watching. I'm going to do the borderline on this tank here. And uh, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and plug uh, the stuff that I need to plug in the video. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. All my uh, longtime subscribers, leave me a thumbs up. And if you're real generous, a comment that helps push the algorithm and keeps, uh, keeps me uh, moving forward on doing these videos. I'm slowly getting better at it. I now got... Uh, some good lighting and um, I'm, you know, doing some things that are making the, the videos better. So anyway, so I'm gonna not get, gonna not get too long winded here. I'm gonna get right back to the pinstriping and uh, the one camera, I got two cameras going right now. So the one camera's on the tank and uh, I got a point of view going on and I'm just gonna go ahead and pallet out the paint here this isn't anything that hasn't been shown on plenty of other videos on how to pinstripe and i am no master at this i'm getting uh better i have you know i'm comfortable in actually doing pinstriping i'm just uh it's practice that's all it comes down to and i'm doing a nice thin line on this so i want to just go ahead and do a practice line right there i'll do another one see how the paint's flowing it feels pretty good I am going to load it up just a pinch more. I'll put that down. And what I got is a little plastic cup there. Uh, you know, I cut out my own and uh, saved some money. I guess that would be shop tip number three. This is a McDonald's, large McDonald's uh, cup. And the reason I like those is that they're, well, they hold the solvent. You can put thinner in there and it won't melt. All right, a couple more test lines here and then I'm gonna get right on it. And so starting from the right-hand side, because I'm left-handed, I'm gonna go ahead and put this stripe down on the tank. The tank is a little bit more difficult than the fenders because it actually rolls underneath here. And uh, back on the back side there, it rolls in the back. But also everybody looks at the tank. And one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this video real quick because I'm getting old. I need to get some reading glasses on.
Okay, I'm back. I got my uh, vision aids on here. And I'm going to go ahead and start striping. I'm going to do from this side, which is the uh, farthest right for me because I'm a left-handed. So I already did a test stripe. I'll just do another one. I don't want to get too anxious and start making a mess. I've done all this good work to come down to this and make a mess is kind of unacceptable. All right, and I'm gonna try not to bore everybody with this, but there it is, just a thin line. Hand done, of course. I'm staying up on the tip because I want it thin. Come back in, do a little dip, a little that. And when you, you wet the tip, you want to kind of do a test run. See how it's got it a lot thicker? So I just want to thin that or thin, uh, thicken the paint up just a pinch. This way it's coming off the tip of that brush here, nice and thin like. And this is going to be an exceptionally thin line uh, with all things considered. I'm going to start right there. And hopefully uh, both cameras are getting a little something here this is very patient and gentle and I'll come back in and tidy this up just a little bit and if you start out thin and you have a bobble or something you can come back over and straighten it up by just thickening it up just a pinch and I'm going to lift this up here because I got to do all the way around to the bottom there and i see i have some paint blow through that i did not get cleaned up i missed it but i'll get it after i do the stripe it's at the very bottom on the seam you'll see it here in a minute Put that down for a second. My arm's getting a little tired there. Tip looks nice and good. Right here at the very bottom. Got a, something there. Let's just see what that's going on there. And I'll just proceed to get this done here. What I'm going to do is down here, I'm just going to kind of be very gentle and get the line in there. I'm getting squirrely. I better I gotta straighten that up. And this is uh, part of the gig. Yeah, thicken that line up just a little bit. Totally missed there. I'm going to have to correct that. And I'm going to show this in the video because, well, it's important. And this is where it gets difficult sometimes is doing these things here. And the brush just wants to keep rotating out. So before I make too much of a mess, I'll go on to the other side and I'll come back and correct that. And get some more paint here. I'm going to get this 
get the flow out of the brush right because I got two nice long runs and I can do both of them on the left hand side because I'm going to rotate the tank. So I'll start right here and make sure my line's good. Perfect. And I will go here because this will be on the right hand side. We're going to rotate it. Go one more time because this paint does shrink up just a little bit. I've learned that in the past. I'm kind of in the shadow here, so all my apparatus here to shoot this video. Coming over the edge here, I'm going to start bending my knees and come down. Looks great up top. Just gotta crack this here. There we go. All right, round two. And hopefully, the, hopefully this camera is picking it up. Whew, that one came out nice. Wow. Okay, that's uh, unheard of for me. <laughs> so anyways, uh, all right, just got to tidy up this end here and then come back in and do the, uh, do the corrections up front. I did this one first. And it was to, to the right. I got thin down there, I uh, <laughs> thicken that up. My hand was kind of in the way. Beautiful. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get the front bender stripe doing the same thing. Uh, the good thing about this is that I'm actually pulling this way and then I can rotate the fender around 180 degrees so I can keep everything on the same side. I'm doing a pull stroke the whole time and uh, well, I'm going to go ahead and time lapse it and that's it. I'm going to get stripe. <music>
All right, here's your stripe. Nice and gold, both sides. I ended up just not rotating the fender, but just uh, because it was narrow enough, I could work on both sides. But yeah, I'm real happy with that. And uh, there we go. Now here's rear fender it's all striped and done i'm happy with this here and uh we're looking good next phase is to get some clear on there and uh yeah make this thing all finished up and wonderful Here's the final result of the race stripe Harley Davidson. This thing came out nice, looks good, nice and shiny. The rear fender here. I'm very happy with how this came out. But there you go, just the basics. That's all I uh, showed on this. And if you uh, like this content, please subscribe, leave a thumbs up. The comment always helps. And uh, that's it for now. Next video coming up soon.